until now, people still say it's that Kenya has the best DJs in East Africa and all that mm-hmm. because it has like all the best studio equipment, mm-hmm. DJ equipment, like all all the biggest shops of that produce DJ equipment are all in Kenya. Mm-hmm. There's no any DJ equipment shop in Uganda, like Pioneer or Serato or anything. Mm-hmm. They're all in Kenya. Mm-hmm. So and all the biggest DJ names are all in Kenya, yeah. like from Joe Mafame, Cream de la Cream, all the biggest DJ names. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Juanita Maya and this is the Repat Podcast. I'll let our new guest tell you who he is. Uh, welcome to Kenganda Podcast. <laughs> uh, my name is Melvin DJ. Yeah, um, certified DJ, okay. dis- disco jockey around Kampala. Yeah. That's nice. You're welcome. Thank you. It's your boy, Master Gobs. Happy to be back after a minute. Uh, certified hustler. Okay. OG. One of the realest niggas on the internet. Okay. <laughs> we hear you. Okay, O'Shea. <laughs> it's hard to beat that one, but uh, O'Shea Dick Jackson. Okay, O'Shea, take this one. So, um, shout out to DJ Melvin. He came to the um the Speed Networking event, and um, he's just uh you know just really been supporting us. He's a friend of DJ Maintain. And I was talking to Roy. Roy's in the, in the background. I went to the uh, Ugandan Independence Day. In fact, we were all there. Yeah, we did. Me, you, and Rachel. Rachel was drunk, but uh, this no. is joking. She wasn't drunk. Rachel doesn't drink, guys. Rachel doesn't drink. But um, we were there at the Ugandan Independence Day party, and that's how I met Roy. But I didn't know that you were there, DJing at the time. Yeah. Okay, and so then we 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 met. I think through maintain, and so um. We were talking about you have a tour coming up very soon. Yeah. In Nairobi. Yes. Okay. And we were talking about the uh, the market and people. Again, I was talking to uh, some people that have moved here. They were considering moving to Kenya or staying here in Uganda or if they should do so. But I want to know for people who want, we want to give people a really good expectation of what the market is. I know it's in your industry, which is DJing, and then you, Gaba's also been affiliated with, you know, or still is, um, what happens in the spirit industry, nighttime industry, things like that. What is the difference between you trying to, um, you know, get gigs in the Kampala night market and what, and what opportun- opportunities that you're seeing right now in Nairobi? Um, I'd say there is number one value for money. Okay. And uh, Nairobi. Roy always says that. Like, sorry, that like value for money. Like, they really, they really want value for money in Nairobi. And when you're good, trust me, you get all the bookends. Okay. Yeah, but in Uganda, apparently, vibes. <laughs> sorry, sorry to say this, but it's nowadays it's all about vibes. It's about it's about the eat thing. Like, the person who is trending, or let me say something has happened to. Let me say a certain DJ or something. Someone may probably feel pity or he's trending because of something different. Mm. He's going to get booked. And like, it's it's just all about the trends, I think, in Uganda. Mm. So, but in Kenya, it's about what the craft, like the craft you hold as a DJ mm. or as a creative. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, like the times of, of, I've gone there this year, I've gone there like nine times. You Wait, 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 wait. You're going to Kenya nine times? Yeah. This year? This year, nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine times. What's after six, seven, eight? Nine. Okay, nine. Nine times. <laughs> nine times. Nine times, yeah. And all the, uh, so the, the nine times. So the four times, times I, was not, I was not DJing. Mm-hmm. I was just going to study the market. Okay, let's talk about that. That's important. Yeah. Because somebody that comes from Uganda, because you know a lot of people that come from the, um, let's say, African-American side or Caribbean, British Caribbean, they may think that, King and Uganda, maybe even the same, something like that, as far as the markets. But you went four times just to study the market. What made you even want to go there first, and and how did you study the market? You know, when we when when you start DJing, like uh, most like it's it's until now people still say it that Kenya has the best DJs in East Africa and all that mm-hmm. because it has like all the best studio equipment, mm-hmm. DJ equipment, like all all the biggest shops of that produce DJ equipment are all in Kenya. Mm-hmm. There's no any DJ equipment shop in Uganda. 
like Pioneer or Serato or anything. Mm -hmm. They're all in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So, and all the biggest DJ names are all in Kenya. Yeah. Like from Joma Fame, Cream de la Cream, all the biggest DJ names. Mm -hmm. So, literally, uh, you feel like you're going into a world of a lot of DJs and uh, there's like higher competition. Mm -hmm. And by your surprise, is you're reaching there, but everyone is really... There's no competition, I would say, but everyone is really trying to push his agenda. As a DJ, as a creative, or mm -hmm. like me as a DJ, every DJ is there. And surprisingly, if I can tell you this, the biggest, the, the Kenyan DJ market is highly dominated by Nigerian DJs. You're talking about that. Why do you think that is? It's because uh, there, are high, there are a lot of opportunities in Kenya for, for like, let me say, for, for the DJs. Because now, like, the biggest DJs in Kenya, all the DJs with the big names in Kenya, don't perform, like, in high-end places. Oh. They perform on big events. They don't appear, like, they're scarce. You'll never find them randomly. Celebrities. Yeah. This, this kind of reminds me of John Lita a little bit, kind of. Like, what you'll find him, like, celebrity. once. He does, he does, like, he doesn't have a regular gig, but he has a gig every weekend. Okay. So, like, he's just a celebrity DJ. Okay. So, and being on that status quo, trust me, uh, the bug is really big. And uh, I'm, and I happen to be like one of the few Ugandan DJs to try to explore the Kenyan market. And uh, and the respect is there for like the people in Kenya and the love they're showing. I would say they're showing a lot of love. Because for the nine times I've been there, I'm not just getting bookings, bookings on bookings. Mm -hmm. By okay. then, I just went there and I wouldn't even get a single booking because this guy is booked ahead of time. Mm. Mm. You can't get a booking. Let me say, you want to go next week, you can't get a booking next week or this month. You have to wait or you have, they have to schedule for probably February or January. So okay. how, how did you secure your first booking? Exactly. That's what Nairobi. I um, I have a shout out to my friend. He's called DJ Rafi. He's Nigerian. So he was in Kenya. He was in Uganda. And uh, when he came to Uganda was also trying to explore the market, East African market. He hit me up on, on Instagram. I told him, yeah, cool, we can link up. I told him how our market runs and everything. He told me I may be moving to Kenya. I hooked him up with a gig. Uh, so when I went to Kenya, I met him uh, at one of like uh, famous uh, public places. There's a club called Gemini. Mm. So I tell him I'm going to be in Kenya. He tells me, I wish you told me earlier, but let me see. Let me know when you're coming back a week prior, then we can do something. And that's how I got my first gig. Mm. Okay. Yeah. How is the pay in comparison to the Uganda, Mar Kampala Central Market? Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as how do they pay? Is it fast? Is it a more? Things like that. I would say it's it's more since you're, you're, you're DJ was, you're like a guest DJ. Okay. From a different country. Okay. So they want to have like that whole spice of what you're coming with from your country and spice it up with theirs mm. to probably give them something, a good night or a, a good experience at the end of the night. So, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of trends, I see in Uganda, we now have like female DJs. No shade to them. I think they're amazing. But I see it's like they're getting more booked than the actual DJs that have like studied for mm. for the skill and whatnot. And is that something that you see happening in Kenya too? Or here? In Kenya, like I said, it's mm. about uh, how good you are and uh, the skills, mm. how good you're going to... That I feel that the bar owners or like, the people who own these establishments uh, don't think about whether you're a female DJ, they're all taken as DJs. Mm. So it's what you put on the table, okay. how you pull the crowd, the experience, how you make people turn up. Because the more you make people turn up, make them happy, the more money they spend. So the uh. more money you get to your pocket too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next time they're calling you, you you have the higher chance of asking for much more money. Mm. Yeah. Is that what you do? You ask for more money? Yeah. Like I've like the the last two establishments I've played in, I've got I've got like they've added me a hundred dollars each. Mm -hmm. on my tour so that's a plus one for me yeah. because now they understand what I'm delivering but you said that that's a problem here 
it's a problem here. The problem we have in Uganda is one, it's uh, from, uh, I would say, like from even the, the club promoters and everything, they, they, they tend to know that this DJ works for this amount of money mm. and like they would refuse, they would rather book two other DJs to cover up to cover up a better experience they would have received with one, one DJ. DJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like you didn't answer my female DJ's question. <laughs> Are you <laughs> boy, you're avoiding that? Okay, I'm not avoiding it. Watching? So I'm not avoiding it. Uh shout out to every female DJ in Uganda mm. and keep killing it. Um like I said, it's about trends. Right now the biggest trend in Uganda is about the female DJs. True. Mm-hmm. Oh, because they can leave the booth and go and dance. It's not about the dancing. It's about delivering. Um, okay. It's about delivering. And uh, I salute them that most of them are really killing it. Mm. And others are getting booked even out of Uganda. So, yeah. Okay. Uganda is about trends. <coughs> That's why I can't lie to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I kind of feel like it's it's an unfair comparison to label them strictly as DJs because you know these females out here who are getting a lot of money a lot of it a lot not only are they booking shows here um with a, with a lot of visibility these big time concert events mm-hmm. but they're getting booked abroad as well yeah. um especially like even in Juba Yes, mm. South Sudan, Rwanda, mm. you know, Dubai, mm. Abu, yeah. Abu Dhabi, yeah. you name it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there is no coincidence that uh, they're all baddies, right? True, true. Yeah. Um, I won't venture too far down that path, but I'll say this. Mm-hmm. I feel like these ladies have tapped into a niche and understand that there's a demand for that. Yeah. Uh, and they've also created... An ability they've tapped into an ability to entertain the audience beyond the skill set that is needed yeah. to be considered a mm-hmm. technically proficient DJ. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the time getting behind the Serato mixer now, it's about programming and pressing buttons mm-hmm. as opposed to understanding what the sequence of the songs that you need to curate and create a flow mm-hmm. and bring the crowd up and bring it down and when a DJ takes a crowd on a journey over a two-hour set, it's like almost like a religious experience. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these uh, DJs who are the flavor of the moment, I'll, I'll say that respectfully, are not only recognized for their ability to play the music behind the decks with skill, but like you said, they get out from behind the decks. They run out into the crowd and they, they are their own hype person as well. And, you know, they dance, they have choreographed yeah. backup dancers. A lot. So I, I consider them in the category as entertainers. Oh, I like that. And I think the promoters who are booking them book them knowing that they're going to get a full package of entertainment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From the look, the styling, the sex appeal, the dancers. attitude, the way that they call and response energy from some of them into the crowd is infectious. Um, I, I think all of that deserves to be respected and appreciated Mm -hmm. but i also think that there's a certain category of i don't know i I feel like these 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 guys who consider themselves the the best of the best djs yeah are just allowing it to happen Mm. they're getting beat allowing it to happen they're just sitting back and also being satisfied with the lane that they said and if you want me Come find me. Yeah. Come okay. Find me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Can we talk about that real quick? Because yeah. that attitude, if you want me, come find me. In my small time in Uganda, is very prevalent here. And I can see how somebody can easily come in in the market and, okay, well, I'm going to push my agenda into the market. Why do you think that that mentality is pervasive? I think, I think DJs fit into, for me, DJs fit into the same category as, People are really gonna hate me. It's all right. it's okay. <laughs> a lot of the musicians that I am that I am observing, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in the Ugandan hip hop community or in the Ugandan music community in general, mm-hmm. make music for Ugandans in Uganda. Yeah. Yes, and I'm not particularly interested in making music that the world can embrace. Mm. Similarly, if you know Melvin DJ decides to go to Kenya, he knows that he's not 
only playing for a crowd of people who are from the neighborhoods that he frequents when he travels around Kampala. Yeah. He's also playing for people from a variety of different countries okay. across Africa, people okay. of various nationalities okay. and things of that nature. So when you go there, you're showing out for a world audience. Right. And you, and, and you need to recognize and register that that's the approach that's going to keep getting you invited back. And I okay. think a lot of our DJs here are comfortably secure in being congratulated by their friends and peers in the hood yeah. right. for being the shit. All right. Right? And according to the standard of what a, a an, an artist who's appreciated around here looks like, yeah. I'm the man. And I'm, I'm happily the man here. Yeah. If I venture out there, hmm, if, I, if, I, if I bring my skill set and I put myself behind the decks side by side with some of these other African DJs out here... Yeah, you might, know, get, might I, get smashed. Yes, I might get smashed. But then again, why do I even need to inconvenience myself? Mm. Right. With all of that. Because again, at home, I'm the man. Right. Uh -huh. And I'm comfortably the man. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, you have to step out there and, and, and really take a chance. Um, I know a guy um, who's a DJ who I've had a relationship with for a long time mm -hmm. through, through the capacity of having sponsored some of the events that he and his partner participate with a guy named DJ Slick Stewart. Right. Oh yeah. Um, I, I really liked the guy mm -hmm. and I like the guy for the fact that he's putting himself out there and presenting himself as somebody who wants to be bigger than UG famous. Yeah. 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 And not only is he presenting himself as that he's actively pursuing it and he's doing it in a way that shows himself to an international audience right? And, 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 and he's showing his versatility and he's showing the quality of what it is that he can do behind the decks. He's got the style, he's got the looks, he's got the swag. So that on its face is marketable. But when yeah. he gets behind the decks, he creates an experience right. that I think a lot of people are excited to see and, and be a part of when he travels to these different markets and countries that he goes out to and, as a result of that, he's winning awards and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, music. He also has producing an album. songs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he's been producing music for a long time. So that versatility comes into play as a producer as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you know, there are a lot of examples of, of, of DJs out here in UG. Um, I'm not so familiar with a lot of the um, mainstream DJs in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I know DJ John Fame, I've been to his parties. Fire. I know Cream Della Cream personally. Met, I've met Cream Della Cream personally and been to a couple of his parties. Epic, amazing, right? Mm. So those guys at the top, people like DJ Simple Simon, who's kind of like the Godfather, yeah. OG, right? Yeah. All that fully focused, fully focused, right? Uh, yeah. Shout out to my man uh, DJ Protege out <laughs> there in Kenya, man. My Diageo brethren. I think those guys are really killing it. What about in, this in guy Shinsky? He's in Houston somewhere, but he's like he's good. Every video he puts on YouTube is like a million views. Yeah. The Shinsky guy. Yeah. He's Kenyan. Kenyan. I, I, I even saw he's doing a, a East African tour. So, do be killing yeah. it. Yeah. Every video. Yeah. Yeah. But I think U Ugandan crowds love Ugandan stuff so much. Okay. That it also gives you not a false sense of how great you are. Mm. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Right? So, a few weeks back, I was at an event. Um... It was called Oba Fest mm -hmm. in Munyonyo, Jahazi Pier. It was a huge lineup of acts and artists. And one of the artists was Ben Soul from Kenya. Yeah. And that, gay, that guy came out and he performed. He sang some soulful tunes. Yeah. And of course, 90% of what he was singing, was singing was in Swahili. Yeah. And not all of the audience could sing along. But as a person who just appreciates good performance yeah the guy's voice was magical the band was killing it yeah but the audience was sleeping it was literally kuhani only singing at that <laughs> <point>. <laughs> because they kept turning the camera to her so she kept appearing on the big screen. you went to oberfest um, you guys are having fun after, after work the audience was showing this guy no Ready? love and i was mind blown because immediately after he got off stage right they started putting on ugandan dj uh, who who you know has a huge fan following here, and he was just playing the songs that everybody is used to hearing every single day, mm -hmm. and the people, people were screaming, <laughs> and jumping out of their skin, and I'm like, yo, I realize that Ugandans just love what Ugandans like, yeah, yeah. especially and if it's in Luganda. No matter how good you are, <laughs> mm. you can come here, and you may not necessarily be allowed to understand 
how how your quality mm-hmm. is 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 not well received by an audience here. But then again, you can flip it on its face. Somebody who's not as good as you, not as talented as you, but because they are of this place, yeah, the crowd will explode for them, and you're just like, okay, now you're talking about something that's a bigger issue here, right? Yeah, yeah I have yeah. a good friend of mine. He's uh yeah, I'm like I'm like is you know I, I mentor so many greats in the game, but he's gonna be one of my one of my best students. Raymond Kahuma. Yeah. <laughs> Raymond Kahuma is under the school of O'Shea. I talk, to, I talk to him every day. He had the same problem that Melvin's t- having an issue with, which is I'm a guy, I'm talented, but you know, you know, he grew up very privileged life and things like that. He's not the uh, shout out to the brother Alien Skin at Brivian. He's going around every day, you know, around here <laughs> all the time. I didn't even know who this guy was. I'm like, wait, wait, who is this? So, oh, that's Alien Skin. So, um, so he he didn't feel like here I can make anything of myself. The guy goes to Kenya. We have Oberfest. Which is the same situation as October. I'm assuming it's October Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Because co- it was in. A cousin of the same event, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I think Bell was here. Tusker was there. Correct. Yeah. I think Serengeti was in Tanzania. Correct. South Sudan. I don't know if that was also Tusker. It was. Okay. So he calls me. The guy goes down there. He breaks a world record. We, um, we, 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 we help him with some of the equipment to break the world record there in Karen. The guy calls me and says, I'm not coming back. There's no way. Yeah. You see every video the guy does there in the market. It's even that video, which was was was, was which was with Oktoberfest, hit 100,000 views. Every other video is like 400,000 views. So I'm, I'm getting back to Melvin here. So Melvin, listen to what, you know, our brother Gabs has discreetly pointed out in, in ways that I could not explain because he's also a part of your industry in, in, in many ways that I'm not. Yeah. People even tell me, I talked to Gabs about it, get out of Kampala. Take the repat to Nairobi. Joshua Baraka, for, for, for shout out to Roy, he's been back, so you guys know, right? Yeah. Josh Baraka is going to go to Nairobi too. Yeah, he's on, a, I think on the 5th. On the 5th, yeah. Nice guy, I met him before one time. He has more fans in Nairobi than here. Let me stop you before we go back to you. We, as the Repat Podcast, have a better chance of being recognized in Nairobi yeah. than in Kampala. Yeah. It is our second best market. Okay, with that being said, when you want to go out there, first question is, why haven't you moved? You've been there for nine times. Why didn't you relocate? And okay. Yeah, uh, I'd say I've I haven't relocated because I've um I've also laid a, a strong background because I've been in the in the like in the business or the DJ business for eight years now. Mm-hmm. So I've really laid my whole background of the Ugandan market. Yes, and I have like people who like who really st- who have stood by me and. St- supported me all the way throughout mm-hmm. and like have these these establishments that have booked me probably until like next year like my contracts like end up like next year like probably march or something in uganda in uganda and i have to be there like every saturday or something like that so like i like i told you uh off air sometime uh it's better for me and it's like for a dj for someone who's e- who can easily travel not in the sense of like I would say, like uh, an example of Raymond. Raymond, Raymond would be best for him to stay because um, because of the content he's creating and the perception he's receiving from the other side. Mm-hmm. But I can still juggle double markets, mm. but I know I have a higher reception the other side and much respect the other side because my skill set is appreciated highly the mm. other side than. It's appreciated at home. Okay, so then do you think that after your contracts are done here, because me and God have talked about this. We, we have a, re, I'm going to be honest, we have a repad podcast, we have a WhatsApp group. Yeah. I have talked about flirting with the idea, and I've done, shout to Roy, I've done this podcast in Kenya. It's responded well. We've considered 
the possibility of of leaving. Um, although I, I'm not going to do that, but what do you say about the market here in Uganda? Do you feel like that the industry is improving? Do you feel like things are going to get better? Uh, things can get better if we put in, if, if like we put in works and we have support from um, from everyone. I would say, mm. like from from you guys. Uh, giving us the voice to come and talk about this and guys also like the bar promoters, the club owners uh, to really look out for there's a lot of young talent mm -hmm. even DJs themselves who have even been in this market for even more years than even I, I have been but they're still underground because they haven't got like that they haven't got that push because uh, most of these establishments are still booking the same DJs They've been booking probably eight, eight to fifteen years. Eight to fifteen years. Yeah. Who's still alive? Oh, sorry. Like, <laughs> like someone will open up a band next year, and so yeah, like someone will open up a band next year. Like uh, an example, uh, like the Kisementi. We have been buzz like from Fat Boys from, but most of the DJs used to play from there. Iguana, Fat Boy, all those places. Mm. Are still the DJs who still play on that street. And ask yourself why. Okay. It's because they have grown. They have grown with the. They have grown with the, with the people uh, mm. who have built up these places, and they feel they are comfortable with these guys to deliver something good mm. for their clients. And mm. not 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 remembering that the generations are really changing. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So one thing I know about about the Kenyan market. Let me just say this. Even on our TikTok, um, we'll find that over 50% for the Pan African Dating Show, something like that. A lot of it's coming from Kenya. Not to say that Ugandans don't support because they do. Yeah. But I think that um, people who are more likely to be online, people who are like more innovative things, they tend to have that culture more or less there than here. Even I, I'm hearing like even in upper management, it's not uncommon. I think we're one of the few startups here that may not have um, Kenyan management. Of course, shout out to Rachel. We have a Ken a G you got a G GM. But um, do you, do, what is what is it that you think that are that, that's keeping? Let's say, for example, the Ugandan market from responding similar, not equal, as as a, as a fan base to the Kenyan market. Um, I feel it's it's. Like I said, it's uh, it's 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 efforts, both on the guys who the receiving end, and the ones who are giving out these jobs. Like, as we are, we have to put like effort in ourselves to push ourselves, as uh -huh. fans, uh, starting from our social medias and everything, mm -hmm. and really be very hungry to really push our craft out there. Mm -hmm. But some some of them are, are so like he said, some some DJs are comfortable where they are. Mm -hmm. And they would rather wait for the money to reach them than going out there to look for it. I traveled to Nairobi, no, because I, went to, I had money. No, I didn't have money. But I went to look for... Opportunity. Yeah, you understand. No, because I want more money, but I really want to invade into that market mm -hmm. and really try to push my brand to much more bigger audiences. Uh -huh. To get even much more better bookings. Right. Yeah. And also probably to push to push the whole DJ DJ culture from just being just being from home, uh, just like just staying from Uganda and not traveling. The only DJ I know who who, who has traveled who travels literally every year who does tours is Silverback. Who is Silverback? He's a, oh, he's he's a legendary DJ. Legend. Hey, I've heard about him before. Yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you something about Silverback. <clears throat> no, I need I need to step in on this one. You ask who is Silverback, formerly known as DJ Ape Man. That dude performed at my wedding. Let me tell you something. He set that place on fire, bro. Literally, he was. We saw the pictures. You saw the <laughs> pictures. <laughs> let me tell you something. No, D Silverback has been a friend of mine for a long time, mm -hmm. and I've told this guy. Right, he used to be your girlfriend's favorite DJ. Mm. Now he's known as Africa's top tier. Africa's top tier. Africa's top tier, and that dude is a one-man show. I'm talking about from the fact that this dude 
enters the arena in an LED outfit looking like something straight out of Tron <laughs> from the fact that this dude has invested. When you talk about when you talk about understanding what it takes to hone your craft and deliver an experience for the fans that is unforgettable. Silverback has taken that thing to the 10th level because he doesn't show up and plug his decks into whatever setup you've got going on. He brings his own setup. Mm. And this dude has invested the same way that you like to reinvest in growing your business. Mm -hmm. Silverback has reinvested and invested and invested and invested when it comes to LEDs, when it comes to smoke machines, when it comes to CO2 cannons, smoke, fire, laser, bubbles, clappers, you name it. Any party accessory that this dude can have with his brand name on it, he's got it. The Silverback Army with the T-shirts and the hats, his brand is strong worldwide, I'm talking about. Any country in this world where there's a critical number of Ugandans, he's been there. Right? Whoa. We, we'd beat festival every year, August through October of, of, of every year in Europe. We'd beat festival. He's there on the ground as one of the headliners. This dude has created an, an, an entire business, Silverback events, Silverback DJs, on the strength of being able to bring the party to life. So he's one of the dudes I get excited about when I see what he's doing out there in the world because I wish every DJ would just be inspired to reach that level. Or to pick mm. a leaf. To pick a leaf from one of the pages from his book. A guy can write an encyclopedia about building. How old is he? I mean, he's probably around my age. Okay, he's right. Maybe age. early forties, maybe late thirties. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. You okay. know, disrespect the brother by misstating his age. But I feel like we're from the same generation. Yeah. Same age group. We know a lot of the same people. Have the same friends. But that guy is a hard worker. He's a hustler. He's a grinder. And he holds himself to only one person's standard: his. And he wants to be the best. He wants yeah. to dominate the world. And he's and uh, he supports DJs. He's the first person who told me. Novin, if you wanna get on a bus, get on a bus and go to town. Yeah. Go and discover how the yeah. how the how those guys do their stuff. Yeah. Craft your own craft. Just do you. No one is no one is gonna call you from Uganda and you'll get a bookie from Nairobi or anywhere you wanna Ooh. fly or it depends on how f how far you wanna fly. Mm. So just don't sit on yourself, just keep pushing. Well, and every time mm. I've traveled to Nairobi and done a performance, he calls me the next day. And tells me I'm watching. Wow. Shout out to him. Is he still living here? Yeah, he came back. He came back from the US. Okay. Yeah. So let me, let me ask one last question because I know that one thing I've noticed, even as an African American living here in Uganda, there is that Ugandan diaspora that I don't know. I saw alien skin in London. <laughs> I think at the same time I was at, I had I basically I saw the clips and the clips got like a million views on TikTok. Yeah. So uh, it was all Uganda, so I knew that had to be Ugandans, right? Yeah. Then there's Ugandan communities in Doha that brought like CB Talker to Doha. And then there's Abu Dhabi, there's Dubai, there's the United States, there's the Boston crew that bring people there. So you have these Ugandans that are organizing these things in the diaspora and they're bringing people. Uh, I never hear any complaints about people that's never getting paid from there. Yeah. So the Ugandan diaspora is trying to pull its weight in bringing their entertainers and things, even their food. I was on business class going to Uganda Airlines and um, all this Matoki, I just, you know, I, I just saw it going to Dubai at the time. Yeah. So it seems like the, the, the Ugandan diaspora is trying to keep the, the culture coming, the remnants of the culture to the, wherever they're at. And they're doing an excellent job of doing that. Yeah. How hard is it to, for somebody like yourself to get in with the diaspora people that, you know, are running these, uh, you know, entertainment industries in Doha or Dubai or, or Black London or the, the Massachusetts crew? It's really, I think it's really about the connections. I literally have all these contacts. And shout out to Silverback, like you said, he gives he gives me contacts. He tells me you, if you wanna go to London, he has someone there. You wanna go here? He has a contact there. Even when I went to Kenya, my first gig, I didn't get the gig, but he gave me a contact, and I got a good reception. It was it was a Ugandan promoter who works in Kenya. He helped me introduce me to now the person who gave me a gig in Kenya. So, and like, uh, there there are few people who are really patriotic uh, towards. 
pushing the whole Uganda agenda mm-hmm. outside. Even the Ugandan promoters outside, like shout out to DJ Shade in London. Mm. He's a uh, he's my good friend, and he's also one of Silverback's young DJs. Like he groomed them, so all these guys have tried to push. Is is Shady is the one who takes Slick Stewart to London. Mm. Yeah, he took him for his mixtape party. So most of them have really tried to push and pull all the DJ craft, like the artists and everything, trying to push the whole Uganda agenda and like the whole supporting the whole industry and community DJs and everything outside there. Yeah. So I feel it's just about us holding each other and pulling each other together. Mm-hmm. to to have a common goal and probably put the Ghana flag out there. But you mm-hmm. but in closing, you're feeling like right now the Kenyans are being more supportive in that market than what you're seeing in Kampala. No, I would say they they are supportive because you're giving them you're giving them you're giving them uh something worth their money. Mm. You understand? But the Ugandan community in in in, in uh in Kenya are the biggest supporters of the Ugandan talent in Kenya. Okay. Like all the all, the, all, the, in all, the, all the gigs I've done in Kenya, all the tables, all like let me say forty to fifty percent, like table bookings are all Ugandans. Whoa. Like even Raymond will call me and tell me Melvin, I mean no make it, but my boys are gonna come. Oh he'll even ask for the flyer, send me the flyer, let me share it. Like they have groups they share around, like all okay. of them. They mobilize each other to come and turn up. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Okay. They're working mm. together to turn up. <laughs> 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 I'm sure they're also doing other things. I'm sure they're also doing other things together. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> together. Yeah, uh, sure. uh, between you, uh, Ugandan crowd and the Kenyan crowd, which crowd do you prefer? Which crowd turns up the most? Ugandan crowd. <laughs> it's a Ugandan crowd. Which one drinks the most? Uh, it's a Ugandan crowd. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And the Ugandans are the ones who live last in the bar. So okay, even in Kenya, they live last. We close the bar. Okay, well, that's nice. That's Melvin, where can the people find you if they want to reach out to you? Uh, Melvin DJ. Okay, all the way through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, everywhere. Melvin DJ. And if they want a booking, is there like an email or they can just uh, DM you? My email, Melvin DJ at gmail dot com. Yeah. Um, my number. No. Oh, the ladies may be watching. Maybe they'll just the email yeah, is fine. Yeah, email, email. Gabs. Or you can just DM me on Instagram. <laughs> I was about to say the DMs are wide open, now. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Don't block blessing. your blessings, <laughs> my G. <laughs> Gabs, where can the people find you? Uh, follow me at Master Gabs on uh, Instagram, uh, on the X, on um, that's it. I'll leave it there. Okay, yeah. allergic to average. Of course, you already see it. Mm-hmm. The brand is strong. <laughs> 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 allergic to Average is the podcast. Yeah. Allergic to uh, the number two average podcast on YouTube. Check it out. There's some uh, episodes that uh, are uh, well received by the people. Some new stuff coming up in 2024. I'm excited about it. And okay. um, yeah, stay tuned. We're all excited. Um, yeah. Shay? Don't message me. Okay. Whatever you do, don't message me. <laughs> okay. But you can send us an email at timkenganda at gmail.com. You can also join our WhatsApp group for our viewers for the Repart Podcast. And you can follow us on all our social media pages at Kenganda Nation. You can follow me at Janita Maya. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>